After a year of waiting, we finally have it here. This is the all-new Vespa GTV. This is the most powerful scooter the brand has built to date. But is it everything Vespa makes it out to be? Well, let's find out. This is supposedly the most aesthetically sporty Vespa ever, and well, it certainly does look the part. Up here, it has this bright orange fairing that also serves as a windscreen for the rider because aerodynamics, what the hell. Underneath, you'll find more of those orange accents here and on the wheel. Now, Vespa did say aesthetically sporty and it probably really meant the aesthetic side of sporty because it has all these openings here on the front end and I'm not really sure what they do, but well, they do look pretty good. And you'll find more of those here on the sides and just on the left side of the windscreen. <laughs> well, probably diffusers, again, aerodynamics, what the hell. Out back, you'll get more of these orange accents and here in this beige sabia colorway, it looks pretty neat. But I do have to say, even if they did want that sporty look, Vespa still did a good job of maintaining that retro vibe, especially with this headlight here underneath. You won't find that in your everyday Sprint or Primavera, and here it actually looks pretty unique. Matching that round headlamp up front are these round side mirrors, of course, and this round instrument cluster, which we will dive deeper into a bit later. Oh, and before I forget, you also get more orange accents here on the seat, care of these contrast stitchings. So now it's time to take a look at all the controls and the display here. Let's just turn the bike on first. This, by the way, has a keyless ignition. So this is your fob and you just... Welcome. Goodbye. Ah, oh, I'm turning it off. All right. So there you go. Welcome. It says welcome on the display. And you can turn on, it says. I am so sorry. We just got this a few hours ago literally an hour ago <laughs> so that's why i'm not really familiar yet but yeah now i have it here so you have this round display that shows you the time the current fuel consumption the speedometer of course you have a temperature gauge and your fuel gauge you also have icons for your engine oil for your kill switch check engine light is there of course you have traction control light and the abs you also have an indicator when your side stand is down not that it's gonna run anyway because that comes with a kill switch. So as for the controls here, you have your headlight control. It also has a passing light, which is a good bonus. Your signal lights. And your horn. You have a kill switch here. You can navigate through the display using this mode button here or down here. You have your starter here and your button to open the underseat compartment. Now, I'm not sure how big this is. I haven't checked yet, but it, what's worth noting here is it's easy to remove in case you need to fix something down there. You can probably fit a small open face helmet here, probably uh, an even smaller full face helmet. And of course, if you need to refuel, you'll find the gas tank opening here. You have a hook here for your helmet, for your grocery bag, and this one. You have a small compartment here that can fit your wallet, your phone. The best part here is you can open this even when the bike is running. So in case you need to grab some coins to pay for parking or whatnot, no need to get down the bike. Just press it and go. You can do it on the fly. When you're on the road, there are only two situations that you'll feel you're riding a 300cc scooter. When you're straddling this thing in the middle of standstill traffic and when you twist that throttle whenever you need more power. As for the heavy part, it's only through gridlock that you might find yourself complaining about the weight. This is also where beginner or shorter riders may have some difficulty. But once you hit open highways, it'll start to feel light and agile. The suspension makes for a pretty comfortable ride too, so this will be quite enjoyable to take on long rides. Now as for that powertrain, it is the most powerful Vespa engine to date. It's still not fast, like stupid fast, but it's got much more oomph than your everyday city scoot. Unlike a 150cc bike, this thing gets to highway speeds quite quickly, and it cruises at speed with ease. You won't have any problems overtaking or going uphill with a scooter. 
Actually, there's a third indicator that you're riding a 300cc scooter when you're back at the gas station to refuel. During my time with the GTV, I barely scratched 20 kilometers per liter, so yes, it's kind of bad. It is pretty thirsty. But I did ride mostly in the city and through heavy traffic, so with better conditions, I'm sure you can get slightly better numbers than I did. This for me is arguably the coolest looking Vespa out there right now. And I like the entire package. You add the tech with it, this digital instrument cluster, the storage spaces. And of course, you can do a lot of this as well in terms of customization. The possibilities are endless. Add a bar and side mirror there, add a box here, some panniers there. You know, you can do a lot of stuff with this. You can get very, very creative. And in terms of performance, it has that 300 HPE or the high performance engine. So at least across the Vespa range, this is unmatched. But we have to talk about the elephant in the room, and it's a pretty big and expensive one. The price point. The new Vespa GTV stickers for 425,000 pesos. It's gonna be hard to buy a scooter for this much, and it isn't even allowed to go on the expressway at the very least. But then again, if you're part of the target market for this one, you're probably just looking for a very, very sleek and unique city slicker, and you're not worried about the price tag. And you're probably not looking to go on the tollways anyway, so I don't know, you tell us. But for people like me and for most of us, we probably might be better off getting something else. But having said all that, this is still a very, very good scooter. And if I were to give it a score out of 10, I'm still gonna give it a solid 8.5.